Okay, so moving down the list, we're now down to matching air to blood. That's called ventilation perfusion matching. In this diagram, which is completely false, you can see one capillary bed and one alveoli. Actually, there's tens, hundreds of millions of alveoli, each one with a capillary bed spread throughout the lung. So there's no central control mechanism to make sure that the air goes to the same alveoli as the blood's going to. So there's nothing centrally saying that all the blood, all the ventilation goes to the same place. So how is it that the blood supply goes to the place where the ventilation is going? Because um, sometimes the ventilated part of the lung does not occur in the same place as the perfused part of the lung. So in the, on the left, I've shown an example of where you've got good ventilation and good blood supply both going to the same place. You've got high ventilation, high perfusion. So when that happens, the alveolar oxygen pressure and the alveolar CO2 pressure in that region are normal. Everything's fine. You've got good ventilation, good blood gases leaving in that blood going out to the arterial system. If you had an area where there was high ventilation and low perfusion, so because you've got lots of ventilation, very little perfusion, then the alveolar oxygen pressure is there is going to be high. The alveolar CO2 pressure there is going to be low. The reason is because there's so much ventilation bringing in fresh oxygen, very little perfusion bringing carbon dioxide. So you've got high oxygen pressures, low carbon dioxide pressures. An example of where that might happen is in the apex of the lung. Very little blood supply gets up to the top of your lung because of gravity. So you might have more ventilation up there and less perfusion. A clinical example would be in a pulmonary embolism. So if something gets stuck in the blood supply, slowing down the perfusion to that part of the lung, then you'll have a high ventilation perfusion ratio in that region with abnormal blood gases. Another example is an area of low ventilation perfusion. That's where you've got low ventilation and high perfusion. So now you've got less oxygen coming in and out because you've got low ventilation but you've still got high blood supply coming bringing carbon dioxide so in this type of area you'd have a low alveolar oxygen pressure and a high alveolar carbon dioxide pressure so quite different than an area of high ventilation perfusion there's many many clinical examples of where this might happen so asthma we've got regions of the lung we've got bronchoconstriction narrowing of that airway You've got low ventilation to that area. Um, lung cancer, you might have a tumor in, in, impeding on an airway. Um, other respiratory diseases, um, fibrotic diseases, where you've got low ventilation occurring and still normal perfusion. So obviously you don't want that to happen. You would like it so that when you've got something impeding on the ventilation area, so you don't want to send blood to that area because it's, it's going there for no reason. There's, there's no there's low oxygen pressure. You're not going to pick up oxygen. You're not going to be able to get rid of the CO2 because the CO2 is going to build up there. So there are correction mechanisms. There's control mechanisms to try and make sure that ventilation is matched to perfusion. So the pulmonary vessels, you've got pre-capillary sphincters back here that sense the oxygen and CO2 pressures in that region of the lung. If the pressure of oxygen is low, or the pressure of CO2 is high, then you get constriction of those vessels. So if you imagine here, you've got a patient with asthma where this airway is narrow, there's poor ventilation to this part of the lung, the oxygen pressure is low, the CO2 pressure is high, that's sensed by the oxygen sensed and CO2 sensitive tissues in that pre-capillary sphincter, and that narrows. So now you've got decreased blood supply coming to that region of the lung. So that's the way the lung tries to make sure that the perfusion is always going to areas where there's normal or, or good ventilation. Anytime you've got a narrowing of the airway, then you block the perfusion to that part of the lung, which means it has to go somewhere else. So think about whether that could cause problems for anybody. You have a system built into your lung, which isn't sort of globally intelligent. It's just intelligent down at this level. You're going to have narrowing of that vessel if the oxygen pressure there is low or the CO2 pressure there is high. So think about whether that could cause problems for anybody. We'll talk about that in the um, large group session.
Um, so the, here's uh, examples of some ventilation perfusion problems. So blood going to an underventilated lung, um, restrictive and restrictive lung diseases. So anything where you might get a regional decrease in ventilation, so you got blood supply going to a an, an underventilated part of the lung. Asthma, and COPD, and pulmonary fibrosis, very common. Um, no blood to a well ventilated lung, um, blockage of pulmonary circulation. Example: the pulmonary embolism, very common cause of a profound ventilation perfusion problem. Um, and extreme altitude. Think about that. Think about what would happen if you went to extreme altitude where you've got a low partial pressure of oxygen. What would then happen as a result of that correction mechanism? 